So to assemble the foundation, uh, you're going to need nine of these foundation pieces and three of these that have the extra um, threaded part in to, to make adjustable feet. And the adjustable feet pieces need to be evenly spaced around. So you've got three of them spread around like that with then three of the regular foundation pieces in between each one. For each of these pieces, we're then going to assemble them into a loop and they're going to be located using these 38 millimeter pegs and one of the little 18 millimeter pegs for each one. So for each piece of the foundation, you'll need four of the 38 mil pegs and one of the 18 mil pegs. The pegs are inserted like this into each one. So a 38 mil peg into each of the two end holes one into here just underneath this cutaway and one here just in front of this this small series of cutaways there and then the 18 millimeter peg just goes into the end piece here which will make the center of it so each of these is going to have the same arrangement of pegs so with all the pegs arranged in each of the pieces in the same way then you simply slot them together to form an entire ring I find it's easier to do two halves of the ring and then finally bring those together. So that's one half assembled and then the same on this half. That's two halves and then bring the two halves together. So this will be quite loose at this point. Don't worry, we're about to lock this in place with the drive teeth that we need to insert. So the drive ring is a separate piece that you printed and this will locate within the different teeth that are within the centre of this ring that we formed. This will be quite tight, um, but it's designed to be, it's designed to hold everything together as it locks into place. Be careful you put the ring the right way around. There is a small lip on the bottom of it, so it needs to go this way up. If you've got the lip on top, it's upside down and things are going to go wrong. If you find that it's very tight to go home, then you could try to just sand gently the inside of this ring just to give you a little bit more play to get it to seat itself. So you need to push it into place and it will be quite a tight fit depending on the tolerance of your print. Um, you may find it's a little bit easier to have help from somebody here just to hold things together and be prepared to, to push it down reasonably forcefully but without breaking anything. So it should sit quite firmly in place. What you need to watch here is this hasn't actually gone fully into place yet. This ring, the lip at the bottom, will be quite tight against this, so you will need to massage that home and make sure it goes into place firmly. And then very gently, just making sure that the, the lip here goes and seats itself properly, I've then just tapped it very slightly home with a, a soft rubber hammer so that the surface of this is flat and the lip itself should be flat against the lip on the foundation piece at the bottom. So this should make a fairly smooth um, component. And this really locks the whole piece together. So this is actually quite solid now at this point. If you have any problems with this being loose for any reason, maybe you have different tolerances on your printer, um, there are actually five millimeter holes through here. So you could also bolt this together if you needed to underneath but I've not really found a need to do that with with this design. The next thing is to insert this um, cable guide ring, this foot ring that goes in here um, which the cables, the power and, and the um, any data connections or anything you've got will be routed through the center of this. So this ring has to go in place and will be screwed through the base into the foundation piece to hold it stable. Before you put this piece in place, make sure that you have the drive wheel in because this will prevent it sliding. So the drive wheel needs to be just rested up somewhere. You can see how it engages with the, the foundation. And then this foot ring goes in place there. And finally, insert these small M5 screws through the holes in the foot ring here 
and screw them forwards into the little receiving holes in the foundation piece. These screw heads use an Allen key because obviously you can't get a screwdriver through it whereas you can, if you're patient, use an Allen key to actually put these into place. So I'm just holding this with the drive wheel in place and then just secure it using the Allen key. So that's the, the foundation in place with the, the gear teeth on the outside which holds everything um, in the correct position and the drive wheel which you should feel moves very smoothly throughout the entire body. Don't worry that there's a little bit of play here at the moment. That'll be taken out when we put the platform on top of that. So the next thing we need to do is to mount this Lazy Susan bearing, which is going to sit on top of the, the foundation, and it's going to sit within this groove that's in the, in the base there. If these aren't um, completely uh, sort of rigid, there, there can be a bit of play in these things, then as the weight of the telescope weighs down on it, you can find that these become quite rough. Um, so the movement becomes a little bit jerky in the telescope and we really want this to be quite smooth. So to solve that, what I do is I create a, a series of load bearings which fit into these holes here around the outside of it by taking about a 22 millimeter piece of bar and one of the little M5 bore um, RC bearings and create a, a special bearing which just sits in in that little pocket there. And I put six of these, that's enough, just evenly spaced around the base. So we have six here spaced evenly around and they should be free to move. They don't need to be um, fastened in any way because the bearing when it's screwed in place on top will hold them in place. But these will take the weight of the inside of this bearing and stop it from sagging and starting to create friction. So the final thing we need to do then is just to attach the Lazy Susan bearing on top of the foundation and you'll find that there are four holes which line up with holes in the base and using a four millimeter bolt with a recessed head we can then attach those inside and through the hole and then bolt from the inside underneath and that will hold the bearing in place. Although this is an M5 hole, I use an M4 bolt because we want this recessed head to sit below the surface of the bearing. If the head of the bolt sits above the bearing, it's going to create friction and something for the platform above to catch on. And we want to make sure that this is as smooth as we possibly can. A word of warning because I forget this every time, you probably want somebody to help you with this. Because when you turn this over to attach uh, a washer and a, and a nut to the other side of these screws, you tend to find everything falls back off again. So if you've got somebody who can help you to hold it still while you just tip it up and put these bolts on, uh, that would be a, a big help to you. So that's everything in place and you should see that this is relatively smooth. These aren't fine engineering bearings but they're, they're pretty good and they're quite strong um, but this should move quite smoothly around the base and you can see the drive wheel which will ultimately end up connected to this will be able to push the telescope around as it goes so the very final thing would be just to screw in the three adjustable feet and that will give you a chance if you have a slightly uneven platform for the telescope you can adjust that so that it sits level so the feet screw in like that into the base. So they should sit like this in the base and they will give you the chance to level the telescope when you need to. And also it guarantees that any cables that pass through the center here will actually be able to pass underneath without disturbing the balance of the telescope.